starting a new series. What is our series called? What is it? What is it? The Unseen. Last week, what was my sermon title? Huh? There's somebody inside. Good job, girl. You didn't even look at your notes. I saw you. I see you. I love it when you guys, because, you know, I've really been encouraging Limitless and all of my Limitless E-Church, everybody, RTK Inner Circle, everybody, to make sure that in these next few months that during the teaching that you've got your Bible out, you've got your phone out, whatever you're using, you've got your notes out. And I want you to encourage you to take notes. Today I'm going to be giving you signs to get your faith activated again. I'm going to give you some tips today on how do you get to that somebody. Somebody's in there. It's either the devil or God. Y'all acting like something up in here. You know, either you are are faith in it or you're fearing it. How many of y'all lean towards faith? How many of y'all lean towards faith? How many of you lean more towards fear? It's okay. Some of y'all lying. That's okay. Because it's really easy when the enemy is fighting you to allow fear to be louder than faith. And if it's not, the people around you are helping activate your fear. You ever notice that right before something major is about to happen in your life, you start feeling weird? Anybody like that? Oppressed? And I always tell everybody this. Anytime that God is about to do something miraculous in your life, the forces of hell fight you. And I hear so many people say, I didn't feel anything until I got saved. And then all of a sudden, I felt like all hell was coming at me, and it ain't worth it. So I just going to turn my back on God and because I don't want to be a fo- I don't want to be forced. I don't, wanna, I, I don't want anything fighting me. So if this means, right? And so often what we do is we, we, we reject God in the next season of our lives simply because we don't want to fight. You're going to fight something. Tell your neighbor, you're going to fight something. You're going to fight something. It's just facts. You're going to fight something. It's called life. The Bible says that the rain falls on the what? Ha! The rain falls on the just and the unjust. And when you have Jesus, it makes the fight easier. Why? Because once you accept Jesus into your heart, what happens? Ha! The Holy Spirit comes and what happens? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. That means you can walk into any atmosphere and shift it. You need healing in your body? Activate your power. You have the power to speak to a mountain and it moves. You've got the power to speak to your body and tell your body to line up. The doctor's report said you're going to die. But God's report, report says you shall what? Live and not die. Come on. That's what the Bible says. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, I dare you to look up. I dare you to look up. Why? Because the master has spoken. It's got to get better. It's got, I want y'all talking back to me. It's got to get better. Your situation has got to get better. Your circumstance has got to get better. Your marriage has got to get better. Your depression has got to get better. Your sickness has got to get better. Your children have got to get better. Your spouse has got to get better. Your job has got to get better. Your money has got to get better. That addiction has got to get better. It's got to get better. Why? Because joy comes in the morning. Joy is my is my title deed. Why? Because when God got on that cross, he took it for you. It's got to get better. Ah, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. It will get better when you stop looking at what you ain't got and start looking at what you do got. It's got to get better when you stop focusing on what you lost and thank God for what you found. It's got to get better. Why? Because God never lets a door close without something better coming into your life. Period. Period. You got to stop putting an extra. I sound like my daddy, don't I, Sherry? You got to stop putting. I say every once in a while, I hear my daddy and me preaching. You got to stop putting a question mark where God is putting an exclamation point. It's got to get better. My question to you is, are you letting the chatter stop you? Are you letting the chatter stop you? 
What you see that's on the outside is a reflection and conflict going on on the inside. Let me explain that. What your house looks like is what your insides look like. You find living in clutter? Then you clutter. And guess what you can't hear when you're living in clutter? Huh? You can't hear anything but clutter. When all your friends around you are full of clutter. Even in the house of God, there's order. That's how come you can't have all this stuff going all around in the church. They're like, oh, but when God moves, he does, but he's a God of order. Your house is a God of order. Your, your house should be an exemplification of, of order because you serve a God. That's why your marriages can't be out of order. That's why y'all can't be fighting and leaving each other every other day. It's out of order. That's why your job can't be chaos and confusion because you are order. When you walk into the room, order is there. When you, when you walk into that season, order walks in. Why? Because you are God's. Praise me, King. You bring the order. You can be in the worst situation of your life and bring order. You can be losing your house on the courtroom step and bring order. You can be, your money can be funny for this season, but you bring order. Why? Because I will not give in to my flesh. I know what the word of God said. He said, I will be first. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for me. My body is healthy. My body is strong. Why? Because I bring order. So basically, if your house is chaotic and confused, you ain't serving, you ain't, you ain't got God in, or, in the order that he needs to be in in your life. You got to quit getting caught up in symptoms that you miss the spirit. You got to stop getting caught up in the symptoms that you miss the spirit. You miss the lesson. Of what God's going to do in this season. You may hate your season. There's seasons that I've walked in, y'all. I hated them. I thought, oh, if I looked at what I saw, I would almost freeze in fear. Because I did not see a light at the end of the tunnel. There are those seasons where you think this grief will never go away. There are seasons where you think this pain is never going to leave. There are seasons when you think your money ain't never going to get right. There are seasons when your prodigal son is in and out of jail and you don't know what to do. There are seasons when your spouse comes in and tells you, I don't love you anymore. And you've got to make a decision, Michael, stand or walk. There are seasons when you realize you ain't got enough money to pay your bills, but this ain't where I'm staying. It's a lesson. I want us to go to Mark 9.14. Mark 9.14. There's a spirit of God in this place, a chain-breaking anointing in this place. Something is being activated in this place today. Some of y'all are getting yourself unstuck from that season that you got stuck in. Some of y'all are making up in your mind today, devil, oh my gosh, I'm back. Some of y'all are getting a little bit of flutter going on. Y'all been stuck for a second. You've been letting your circumstances stick you in a season. Mark 9, 14, let's read. I'm going to keep on reading until I stop. It says, when they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. And some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. <laughs> when the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe. And they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. This is the problem with the church. You can hoop and holler, but you ain't got no power. 
You can preach to the paint off the wall, but you ain't got no power. Your power is being built on the backs of stuff you know you shouldn't be touching. He is possessed by an evil spirit, and they won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people. I told y'all he was ratchet. I told y'all he was ratchet. I told y'all he got a thug in here. He said, yeah. Y'all acting like God talks to you like, oh, how you do it today? Come on, baby. You're not, that ain't how he talks to me. He like, girl, you through? Girl, I need you to get up. I, I promise you, I think God talks to me like, pick your thick thigh and let's go. Are you finished? Are you done toying with the sin? Are you done? Are you? Come on, girl. He said, he said, you faithless people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? I want to say that to some of y'all sometimes, but I can't. Okay. You mean I preach every Sunday fire and brimstone and faith and you fall apart every other week? How long must I live with you? You back again? You back in that same spot again? Why you must be so stubborn? It says bring the boy. Mimi raised me. This little five foot tall, 99 pounds soaking wet. So many times she look at me and be like, you threw, but did it kill you? I don't know about y'all, but I need somebody talking to me like that. I said, bring the boy to me. How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion. And he fell to the ground, wreathing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening, Jesus asked the boy's father. He replies, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean? What do you mean if I can, Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes anything, anything that addiction can break, anything that marriage can be saved, anything, you will come back from this bankruptcy and buy you a five-bedroom house, anything, that sickness, oh my God. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, Oh, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but right now I'm not feeling a lot of faith. See, just because you're struggling sometimes don't mean you ain't got it. This is why you got to be a part of a church like Limitless. Because you are going to go through seasons where you can't see God moving. And you're going to have everybody in your ear running their mouth about the situation you're in. Because people love to tell you how to tie your shoes, laces, without shoes on their feet. Jesus asked, anything is possible if you believe. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. There's an unseen. The unseen is what you've got to tap into. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and, the th and, the, and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. And he stood up afterward. When Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out the evil spirit? And Jesus replied, this kind can cast out only, say only, by prayer. This, limitless, is why the enemy 
get you muted in your prayer. You ever been there where you can't pray nothing? Nada. Nada. Ain't got nothing to pray. You just lay there like, oh, read my mind. No, you better open your mouth. Even if all you can say is Jesus, 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 there's just something. If that's all you can say is Jesus, you got to open your mouth. Tell your neighbor, open your mouth. Decree the word of the Lord. This text is coming when Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain with Jesus to be transfigured. The other nine stayed at the bottom of the mountain, which is probably why they couldn't get nothing done. They didn't even make it up there. Why? Because even the disciples struggled sometimes in their faith. Popular opinion never overrides God's purpose for a situation. That's why you got to be careful. Say, you got to be careful who you listen to. The disciples were asking, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we do it? I ain't even going to lie. I wanted to judge the disciples off their faithlessness. How are you going to be sitting with Jesus? You just watched him. These Peter, James, and John just watched him be transfigured into this white, glorious, shiny disco ball looking thing. You got to see miracle signs and wonders. And yet your own faith. I refuse in Limitless to not see signs and wonders. I would love for this church to be so packed with people wrapping around the building because miracles happen. People get up out of their wheelchairs. Lazarus came back from the dead after four days of being stanky. The woman with the issue of blood dwelt for 12 years and then got healed instantly. We see so many miracles happen in the Bible, but why aren't we seeing them today? Because somewhere in us, the world has told us we don't deserve our miracle. And anytime there was ever a miracle in the Bible, there was action. Anytime you ever need a miracle, it's because there's a problem. A problem starts the transformation of the healing. You ever seen those marriages going to hell in a handbasket? They at divorce court. But all of a sudden, God begins to deal with their hearts and 12,000 infidelity cases in one marriage, that's a lot. But then God shifts a heart, and these people come out with the best marriage on the planet. Now they're telling the whole world about how to fix marriages. Why? Because that's when God gets the glory. See, you staying in your rut ain't giving God glory. You staying broken and ashamed of where you're at ain't giving God glory. And so what we see here is we are seeing that popular opinions of all these people, we see that they were, they were they're these Pharisee-type people. They were up there telling all the little nine disciples down at the bottom, your God's fake. Your God's phony. That's what they do. The enemy is always going to send you some ratchet people in your life. They're going to try to talk you out of your miracle. And it's going to probably hurt some of you because it's most of the time the closest people to you that turn on you. You hear me? The ones you spent all your time loving on. The one that had your direct line number. The ones that knew things about you. Because you trusted them. And then the enemy's going to send them in your life to turn on you and try to stop you. And if you give it any of your attention, you are playing into the devil's ploy. Why couldn't they do it? Because they didn't understand there was a difference between feelings and faith. Just because you own your doubt doesn't disqualify you from faith. You're going to walk through some seasons where you feel like you got it going on. And then you're going to walk through some seasons where you're like, there ain't no way I'm going to make it out of this. Two things happen here in this text. The boy gets healed. And the men get help. Write these down. In my drive by. I gotta hurry. How do we get faith and move stronger in these seasons? How do we move forward toward a stronger faith and a heart that trusts God's promises? Number one, you have to remember God's faithfulness. 
I encourage my inner circle all the time to make sure you're putting pictures up on your fridge. Make sure you're remembering. Time hop is a great way on Facebook to remind you of stuff you don't want to know <laughs> and remind you of what God's already brought you through. You got to remember God's faithfulness. Our faith will naturally grow when we make a conscious effort to look for ways to trust God. Pray. Seek the Lord's help. When faced with a need or going through a difficult time. Here's number two. Reflect on God's promises. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Sometimes a teacher's silent during a test. But it don't mean he ain't there. He's working the most when he's quiet. I promise you that. You cannot hang around with me and stay in a place. You either leave this church because I messed with you. And my Holy Ghost spirit aggravated your demons that you didn't want to let go of. Or you going to activate into your calling. Why? Because I'm teaching you this. You've got a part to play. Say, I got a part to play. I got to remember God's faith. I got to reflect on God's promises. Difficulty things often arrive suddenly in our lives. Difficult things, they're going to show up. They're going to just show up. You're going to get a bad doctor's report. You're going to lump in your breast. You're going to, it's like a, 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 a sky is dropping into your lap. In those seasons, you got to remember to go back. Because I can't see mountains bigger than my mirror. It blocks your progress. And it messes up your vision. When we focus on the mountain, we lose faith in God. That's what the enemy does because he is not omnipresent. He cannot be at your house and my house. But his legions of dumb, dumb little rejected angels that walked out with him and believed him over God, they everywhere. But you have the power to shut them down. No weapon. Here's number three. You got to trust God's plan. When we receive bad news or we come face to face with difficult circumstances, often it shakes us to our core. And fear sets in. And a perfect way to build the kind of faith that does not fail is to always trust God's plan. I cannot see you, but I refuse to doubt you. Here's number four. You got to pray God's promises back to Him. What does that mean? A great way to increase your faith is to pray for the promises found in God's word. Some promises in the Bible are for a specific person or people. Faith, however, calls us to believe that if God did it for those people, he can do it for us. Search for Bible verses that you can pray over your situation. It ain't nothing for me to be walking down the driving down the road saying, God, I prophesy over myself and I'm prophesying things in this church. I'm prophesying things in our Atlanta campus that, I, that, 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 that are opening services October 23rd. I'm prophesying over my finances. I'm prophesying over this new season. I'm calling things that are not as though they are. I refuse to magnify on what's coming against me. Number five, you got to set aside time to listen. You cannot just be driving all the time. You need to be able to hear what God is saying and write it down. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll change some things. Why? Because the unseen is where God lives. He's moving things. Here's number six. Ask the Lord to increase your faith. You ain't got no faith? That's fine. God, I want faith, but I don't know how to activate it right now because all I see is horrible stuff. your faith, ask the Lord to increase it to the measure needed to fulfill his will. Because God is faithful to you, y'all. Here's number seven. Read and memorize God's word. Get you some scriptures. Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to bless you and not I was in special ed. I couldn't retain nothing. Learning God's word was something I did to keep the devil in his no teeth mouth. 
I was determined. I put on flashcards. And all throughout the day, I'm looking at them flashcards until I memorize them. Number eight, you got to surrender your trust to God. Not to man, to God. angel that's already overweight because you've never activated that angel. I dare you to ask for the impossible. I dare you to say, God, I ain't staying in this comfortable place because I know outside in the spirit realm it's so much bigger. You'll stop thinking about your situation that's so dull and nasty the minute you start activating your faith that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me this sickness does not have to stay in my body I bet you money you go home and start laying hands on your house anoint your Crisco put it in your hands and say Father I thank you right now that I'm anointing this Crisco and I'm about to walk around my house and I'm about to pray over everything in this house Y'all, I'm selling my house right now. Guess what I did today? There's 12 people coming today to see it. Let me tell you what I did. I walked around my house laying hands on my home. That even if they don't buy my house, they're going to feel Jesus. Do you hear me? Why? Because I am, I am God's, I, I work for the Lord. Everything's an assignment in my life. Stand on your feet. This week. Stop thinking you ain't got no power and realize you've got all kinds of power. That you are powerful. And if God gave you the desire on the inside of you, guess what? He's given you everything you need to activate it. He does not put a desire in your heart and not give you a wherewithal to make it happen. So, Father, everybody lift your hands up like this. Say, Lord, I give you permission to move greatly in my life I won't be afraid to lay hands on anybody in my presence that needs a demon kicked out of them something in their body healed I'm the one I am the one I have an unseen anointing on the inside of me. I'm a revival carrier. I'm a glory chaser. I'm a hell shaker. I'm a game changer. I'm a generational curse breaker. And devil, I beg your worst nightmare. And say, Father, I repent of anything that I've done in my life to mess me up from walking into my future. Live in my heart. Make my heart your home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.